All this is Dr. Mobin Sayyid. So welcome once more. And I do not have my main lights on because we are conserving light. So I understand this doesn't look that great, but still. So let's start with the questions. Thank you very much for being here on a Friday evening. Let's start. Let's start. Um, I saw a question from... I saw a question from Dan. Okay, so Dan, what happens is that because you understand that there is another channel, as I understand from your message here, that channel was for the chit chat. So what I do is I relay the chit chat on both, like I'm doing right now. If afterwards the chit chat becomes a problem for the algo on this main channel, then I would delete it here, but it would continue to stay on the other channel. So instead of recording it here, then downloading it, re uploading it, I just simul cost them. And then based on what it does here, I would leave it or delete it. Raghav says, how come measles isn't having so many variants? Like, So thank God it is not like flu and COVID. It depends the uh, rate of change in a virus. This is a huge field. It's a virologist's field. But generally, the rate of change in a virus depends upon the viral DNA or RNA's length, complexity, and their proofreading enzymes. For example, SARS-CoV-2 actually has proofreading enzymes. And because of that, its rate of change is less. All coronaviruses have proofreading enzymes. So proofreading enzymes, complexity of the genetic material, uh, the more complex it is, the worse the mutations outcome will be. And then our body's behavior with the virus. All of those work together. Paul says, I suspect that China checked the convalescent plasma as they were using it, perhaps much more than in other countries. They may have, yes. And maybe then they said, you know what, done. Or maybe I am not aware of the studies. Meanwhile, in America says, with the hypothesis that LC is caused by viral persistent, persistence, is it possible that the new antibodies might not reach virus-insensitive reservoirs such as brain or stomach linings? Yes, possible, but they would still be able to clear out a lot of the virus that is in the interstitial tissues, and that would help. This should at least, if the antibody therapies move the intensity of the disease downwards or towards betterment, then that means there is something to do with the virus, either pieces of virus or the virus present in the body. Okay, so um, I hope you all know that on 14, 15, and 16 October, there is a, I think 15 and 16, there is an FLCCC conference. I will be speaking there as well. Dr. Paul Merrick and Pierre Corey, Dr. Pierre Corey, and many others will be speaking to. Um, we can meet there. If you would like to attend the conference, there is a link to uh, join us there. And if you would like to meet, just like we met last time in Charleston, um, you are welcome. I'll be in Florida. Uh, where in Flo Florida? Uh, Orlando, I believe. And if somebody is interested, I can give the exact information. I'll just have to figure out what is my schedule there and what are the free times, and then we can have a free time to meet. John says, are they still having you conserve energy? They say that conserve energy, for example, we got this alert today as well, I believe, where they said, let's see, what were the alert or... Um, 
so I can't see it again. Um, they sent an alert that the grids are under stress, so conserve energy from 3 to 9 or something like that. And I am actually fine with doing that. Um, sure, my bigger lights that I have my little remote control button, I can turn them on. They are here, but sure, why not? Plus, it is so hot that uh, turning these big lights on just makes me sweat. So it's, it's cool this way. <laughs> Okay, so Kingpin says, Salam, Dr. Mubin, welcome, Salam. Apart from the FLCCC, why is the research focused on the effects of spike rather than the treatment? Um, I don't understand. Effects of spike rather than the treatments? Sorry, I didn't catch the question. Can you please elaborate a little more? <laughs> Bill Beer says, stay cool. Thank you. Cool beans. So, Par says, hybridoma cells for monoclonal antibodies. Yeah, that's, that's one way to make them. Correct. They can also use bacteria, but hybridomas are used. And my request to the newer cool beans, if you have a question, please put QQQ or something that I can see through this scrolling <laughs> texts and catch that this is a question. Otherwise, I have to read every single comment and I, I can't while they are scrolling. Jill Green says, we've also been offered money to cut our power usage. I think we should... We should do what our part is. It's fine to do it. We have less rains. There are so many parts in the world where the rains are less, the resources are less. So it is fine to adjust with that. Um, meanwhile, in America, says, I just wonder if the virus is beginning to escape Luffy too. So... Ivor has many other mechanisms in addition to disrupting the spike protein. It also disrupts the M pro or, or uh, CL pro. It also uh, modulates the nuclear factor kappa B production. So basically, when um, ivermectin is used for skin diseases or inflammations, it is actually modulating the inflammation there. So this has become a disservice by authorities and by media companies. And nowadays, the media company include the social media companies to sort of forcefully say that the ivermectin can only be for horses and cows and dogs and for worms only. One, it is very much for humans. Number two, it is for worms. Number three, it is for inflammatory modulation as well. And the example for that, if I go here to Google, and I say ivermectin use for skin conditions. So this is Mayo Clinic. Ivermectin 1% topical cream is used to treat lesions of rosacea. Rosacea is a skin disease that causes redness and pimples on your nose, cheeks, chin, and forehead. This medicine is available over the counter. This medicine is available only with your doctor's prescription. <laughs> this product is available in the following dosage forms, cream and lotions. The point is, and, and the reason that it is for rosacea is that it that redness and pimples, there is inflammation. And then the oil is produced and that oil gets in infected and then there is inflammation there as well. 
and ivermectin modulates the inflammation it is very powerful for that they don't use other inflammatory anti-inflammatory creams they say hey why don't you use ivermectin otherwise there are so many other anti-inflammatory products that they if ivermectin was useless they would have asked to use something else but they use it because it's not just for the worms but they have done this disservice a massive campaign of this thing that we all know Okay. Path says, what is your most liked and unliked subject in medicine and why? Okay, so the un I had learned this very early because I never went to a school and I had to become homeschooled and then I had to go and compete in the regular sessions to get into a college. I had learned that if you tell yourself that I hate this subject, then your brain would not work to remember it. It will just not retain it. So I have always told myself, I love this topic. I love this subject. And I then become very fluent with that as well. With this background, the only subject that I was not very much into that I still, if somebody says, study this, uh, forensic medicine was not my favorite. So that was the only one I couldn't, uh, I think I did fine, but I didn't do it with love. Um, everything else, histology or embryology or uh, anatomy or physiology and pathology and medicine, surgery, orb, speeds, I was fine with everything. I loved them. Um, forensics was not my cup of tea. So meanwhile in America says, how are you feeling with your own residual symptoms? So the cough that I had when she came in and did the cleaning, for a couple of days I had more cough and today I have maybe I coughed once or twice throughout the day. Although today I spent more time in this office because um, I started working early for the Dr. Bean lecture. So I don't feel anything but we'll see i mean long covid can be long but so far so good kimberly says question is AppCam the makers of the SP-177? Do you invest in those companies you come across? It seems like you would have an advantage. Uh, Kimberly, I have... My business is also for CMEs. And one important thing with the CMEs is that the conflict of interest is not there. So I usually try not to... Although I know there is so much benefit to be had by researching these companies and their products and seeing the potential of them. But no, I don't. I actually had some shares that during these discussions of the vaccines and others, I actually sold them and I became share less from these pharma companies just so that I can speak without having that underlying um, conflict. So I have no medical related companies shares. Um, so that's by design. At least I can sit here. People accuse me that I have taken money from someone or they've influenced me or uh, follow the money with me. I actually have no shares on them. And I have to, for my CME lectures, I have to actually declare it that I don't have them. So I can't sit here and lie. I don't have them. I have shares in other uh, companies.
Jim says, is SP177 a monoclonal antibody? Yes. It is, it will become a monoclonal antibody. It is, monoclonal is when that antibody, one antibody is produced again and again, and so then it becomes monoclonal. Polyclonal antibodies means, when, let's say when we get infected, and let's say we have the virus, our body will make so many type of antibodies to attack various parts of the virus. So all of those antibodies that are against this one virus, but are of various type because they are binding to various parts, these collectively will be called polyclonal. Monoclonal is if you research those antibodies and choose one that you think is really effective, and then just make copies of that instead of all the thousands of antibodies, and then just in, inject those, then that become monoclonal. So yes, it, if it is a therapeutic, it will become monoclonal. Microbiology Made Ridiculously Easy is one of the best books in the market. It is very good. I love it. I used to study from that. I still study from it. Your next option says, why people with the COVID vaccine get COVID more frequently and why SARS-CoV-1 is also different than SARS-CoV-2? So SARS-CoV-1 and 2 are about 86%, I believe, similar, and the rest is dissimilar. So why is it dissimilar? I do not know. They say these are bads or whatever. So I have not done that research and I'm not going to. The But there is a dissimilarity. And the second part um, why people with the COVID vaccine get COVID more frequently, I think that is not the correct uh, assumption. There is actually no data to show that way. And I know that the statement is going to make some people very angry and they're going to call me names. It has become a general um, thing that I can say something and I know now it is going to cause some folks to be upset. But really... The data that is shown so far is very interesting and very simple. Although I believe continuing to getting in, to get infection or continuing to vaccinate will cause prozone effect. So booster after booster would cause prozone or hook effect. At the same time, Nowadays, you would even see people saying that long haulers is nothing but the vaccine injury being hidden. I feel that making such statements actually causes harm because now the people who need help are stuck in politics. And I know vaccine injured people who are stuck in politics. And not only they're stuck in politics, but the pro-vaccine crowd goes after them just to prove they, that there can be no injury. Or if the anti-vaccine crowd or vaccine-hesitant crowd also goes after them saying, you got the vaccine, see, you deserved it. And pro-vaccine goes after them to say, this is never possible and you're making this shit up. And So it is just such a strange time. So I get my fair share, I would call it fair share of punishment as well for speaking those things. But that's how it is. The when there was no vaccine for COVID, all infections and issues were in unvaccinated. As more and more people started becoming vaccinated, then we started having infections in vaccinated and there started becoming a duality. Then slowly, more vaccinated people are present, then more infections are going to occur in vaccinated. And now as the the variants are escaping as well. They are going to escape in vaccinated as well and not vaccinated too. The people who are not vaccinated, majority of them are healthy. Plus, majority of them have the knowledge of how to do some other things too that I've been discussing for a long time as well. It is so interesting for me that some pe sometimes people send me FLCCC's link to say, go read there. And what they don't realize is that majority of the concepts in there, for example, the long haul protocol, cool beans who have been here, they know I have been actually working on that protocol. And I led that protocol that is on the FLCCC site. I was the lead doctor 
and then we had a bunch of other doctors who were working with me similarly the vaccine injury protocol dr paul marek led it and i was the close doctor working with him almost on a daily basis for the therapies in there and you would see a lot of therapies are those that i have been discussing here the point is there are those therapies as well so folks who are not vaccinated they have a number of things that are helping them as well at the end of the day for me it is very simple it's very clear like day to me and that is nobody is intentionally deliberately saying i want to put myself at risk somebody who gets a vaccine they say i think vaccine will protect me and that is why i want to have it they're not saying that the vaccine is going to injure me or or cause damage to me and that's why i want it similarly if somebody who's saying i don't want to have a vaccine they are also saying it because they think the vaccine would hurt them and they don't want to have it at the end of the day the basic principle is the same and that is the protection of a person now what is their knowledge and what is their understanding they are making a decision on that and at least here i have said it for every for 2 years that number one i have not asked people to go get vaccine or asked them not to get vaccine i still remember then that when these discussions used to occur i would say i will tell you what i'm doing and when i got my vaccines i actually from the vaccine center i did a live afterwards to say i just got the vaccine and going back but i never asked someone to go get it or i also never asked someone to not get it that is a even my sons my older son is an adult man and so he said hey dad i need to have a booster so that i can sit down with my friends and have discussions and i want to be comfortable the only thing i could do was to say here are the various data points and then he decided to have it and sure so my point is um this is not correct that only as the vaccine imagine today 100% of the people become vaccinated then all the infections will be in them and i was going to say this that i was saying this for 2 years that it is not possible for us to say any of us to say that vaccine or a previous infection will somehow block the virus from landing in our mouth or nose a virus arriving in our body is called infection a virus or or bacteria or fung- fungus becoming enough replicated or grown or or triggering our immune system enough that there are symptoms that is called disease so this idea that the vaccine will just protect from getting the virus or spreading the virus was wrong from the beginning and i had been saying it and so <laughs> that gets me the wrath of those who are very pro vaccine and so they go and they become all tied up in knots and they they start uh, screaming and similarly those discussions about vaccine issues or vaccines usage it brings in all kinds of crowd so anyways the point i have always tried to say it and nowadays i say it less i should not be looked at or my work should not be looked at from a political point of view that this is a pro mask or anti mask or pro vaccine or anti vaccine or pro ivermectin or anti ivermectin crowd or position it should be a medical position if you go to a doctor they would not say that the let's say statins are not an option for something that needs statin and they would also not say that statins are 100% safe there is no medicine where only 100% safe and effective things are used so everything has its pros and cons and a medical doctor has to understand what are the various things that are available what are their pros and cons and if there are issues how do we manage them and i've had those discussions so many times 
and all of them are actually here on the YouTube. So one can actually go back. I find it so interesting that people just keep labeling me every once in a while to whatever they want, but they don't get, of course, they don't care to go and check or they would cherry pick here and they didn't do whatever. Anyways. So ZZ Berman says, if your family member had long COVID, which wax would you consider first? Spike protein being the concern, of course. So I am really, I think about it uh, many times, that if somebody is long COVID within my family, or if I am long COVID, will I dare to take a vaccine to see if it helps me? If it helps me, let's say, it, I have heard to some, some people it helps. Then it doesn't matter that is it um, spike or inactivated or mRNA. Contrary to this uh, continuous uh, bandwagon that mRNA is somehow more bad than others, they're all making spike protein. When spike protein causes damage, it puts people in a dis disabled state. Or when the immune system's reaction to spike protein, either from the virus or the vaccine, causes damage, the person can actually... they Losing life is something else. Having a life where one cannot even function correctly and everybody calls them names or attacks them or says it's psychological, it's just horrible. So I don't have an answer for that. I actually think about it, that if I became long COVID, what will I do? Will I go and... Uh, take a vaccine to try to fix it and i think i will not i will rather i know that there is one ray of light and that is as many studies as i'm seeing majority of the patients become better but it takes a long time or they start improving enough to become functional so my plan has always been if it happens i'm going to see could i stay functional and gradually improve This is a very good question, Paul Menton says. The second shot was described as having a kicker to help boost the immune response of the first shot. What was in that second shot that is the kicker? That's a very good question. And right up in the mechanism world. So let me see if I can draw a mechanism for this. You give me an opportunity to draw, I do it. <laughs> so... Here is, let's say, a B cell. I'm not going to draw the whole map. Let's just say B cell, a T cell, T helper cell, then some cytotoxic T cells, CD8 positive. Infection occurs or the vaccine occurs, whatever, the first time exposure occurs. When that exposure occurs, the innate arm becomes activated and phagocytoses it. The, the antigen breaks it up in, into smaller pieces, presents it to T helper zeros. T helper zero would either go T helper one pathway for this or T helper two pathway for this. And then let's say that the B cells and the T cells and the helper cells will become engaged in fighting some of these cells will become memory cells, right? Some of them will become memory cells. These memory cells are now just sitting there waiting for a re-exposure. So if you re-expose them, not only this, that they would attack them, they will make their copies, they will proliferate, number one. So there is a proliferation, that means expansion of the pool for memory cells. Number one. Number two, active cells would increase as well and they would provide immunity for some time. Now we're seeing that the, with the vaccine is like two months. It's supposed to be a year or more than a year or 10 years or something, not two months. But the concept 
is that the active cells would become active again and they would provide protection for some more months, years. Alscov 2 protection was for years, the natural infection protection, not the vaccine protection. Okay, so memory cell pool is increased, active cells are created, and then finally, the affinity maturation occurs. Every re-exposure will cause affinity maturation. In the affinity maturation, Parth is here, he's a medical student, he can tell us. Uh, in the affinity maturation, the cells that are sitting in the lymph nodes or in the other places where the memory cells are sitting, over there, the antigen is presented to them, again, mostly by the follicular dendritic cells, and they present the antigen to the memory cells again, and memory cells become better in working with these antigens. So that is a third mechanism. The fourth mechanism is that as we keep getting exposed, vaccine or the infection, our body would continue to make newer and newer antibodies for more and more areas of that antigen group. So maybe the first time it had these two antibodies, and the next time it has these two that are activated by all those mechanisms, plus it made one more. So that is the basic idea behind boosters or behind reinfections protection. But in case of coronaviruses, we know that even our body will keep getting the common cold, which is by coronavirus as well. Our body can get cold again. So handling coronavirus 100% is not easy for our body. That is one. And the second thing is, Spike protein has a very damaging effect. That is from the infection or from the vaccine. That effect is there. So the third side is a prozone or hook effect. The fourth side, I've discussed it, ADE, that there are some possibilities for ADEs. Then we know the spike zone pathologies. So because of that, just continuing to re-expose, Unless somebody is really at a risk that if they got infected, they will not be able to handle it. Or it would be they are immunosuppressed or they are immunocompromised or they are too old or they are uncontrolled diabetes or they have cancer. So there are situations when it makes sense. So, Paul, I hope... I'm trying to see. I hope that answers that question, some of it. Uh, Misha King says, is the spike protein from the vax the same as the spike protein in the COVID? So this is a very common question, and there is a very common answer as well that I see outside where people say, no, they are not the same. So let me explain why they are majority same. Here is why. Imagine we want our B cell and T cell, our immune cells, so let's say this is a little innocent B cell sitting here. We want to train them. And we want to train them to recognize the spike proteins that are on the SARS-CoV-2. If we train this B cell by looking at a different kind of a protein then it can be trained on this, but then cannot attack this. The training has to be to a similar product. Now, having said that, there are a couple of differences that are from it. And those differences are, number one, the spike or the messenger RNA for the spike has some synthetic synthetically modified pieces so RNA can stay in the body longer. That is not the case with the virus. That is one. Secondly, the spike is locked. Some vaccines that, that have some amino acid changes, just some, not a lot. There are, I think, more than 10,000 amino acids, and we are talking about five, six amino acids. There are some amino acids that are changed to lock the spike protein in in this binding, in this closed state. So that when the cell is becoming exposed to it, it is not becoming exposed to some inside guts of the spike, which 
for the virus it would never see those inside guts and now it is kind of useless trained to an incorrect epitope so because of that this spike is locked so this locking mechanism this different mrna are the changes if it is not an mrna vaccine for example let's say uh, novavax then the spike itself is locked possibly number 1 and number 2 all vaccines have adjuvants that have their problems so spike itself can be compared but there are lots of other differences too now on a on a similar coin for some folks the infection and the spike coming from the infection is more harmful than the spike from the vaccine so there is there are both ways to look at it i hope that answers that question misha <laughs> Texas says liking here and running back to cool beans cafe life. Welcome. <laughs> okay, critical thought says I hope that Dr. Bean Medical Lectures does a talk on wafers question regarding the fact that there are so many questions regarding this strange to me pre requirements for the bivalent vax. Let's see what is that. Where are wafers question? I want to see it. So while I'm going to go look for wa- wafers question, let me just answer this question. uh kingpin says <coughs> apart from the flccc the places who got who get funding universities and labs who focus on conducting studies for covid why do they focus on its effect in the body more than how to get rid of it because they don't believe that there is anything wrong as soon as they say that we need to work on figuring out how to remove the va- uh, spike generated by vaccine for example or as soon as they acknowledge that maybe the spikes s1 protein as dr bruce peterson's study say is sitting in monocytes all of a sudden they lose their narrative and i think that the sad part is they did not have this trust in us public that we can understand we can learn maybe we cannot be as good as some of these arrogant uh snobs think that they can understand fine let's say we cannot understand as well i think for two and a half years living in a pandemic where where every day we are thinking about who's going to die now and have nothing else to do and then lockdowns and then psychological issues and then physical financial financial all those issues i think we can focus very well to figure out what is good for us so if they give us more data we will eat it up and we will use it and they didn't do it and so for the betterment of us they just didn't provide that data or not create hesitation i think they did more damage by that by making people upset because now people are getting information from studies and they can go and read them and here is a authority that is trying to not even talk about it so it's just it's a mess uh, king pen i don't have a good answer for you the worst thing in my opinion during the pandemic was people fighting with each other they had to do the authorities the leaderships they had to do nothing it was people tearing down each other Hey Sky Frog how are you <laughs> Stereo channel today <laughs> Denise says I'm watching on my TV in Cool Beans cafe and comments here on my phone so you can see now this on your TV or not <laughs> Yes Misha I think if anywhere So there are so many snake oil salesmen who say we will detox from the back, uh, spike. I think that the discussions that we have done here 
the foundations for those discussions i think those discussions are very useful the long haul discussions and autophagy and intermittent fasting and the dandelion and the resveratrol caffeine um the discussions that were done there is a foundational element in there to first figure out is this even spike or something else it can can be immune system dysregulation it can be something else so first to figure out what is it and then to see how do we manage it but yes yeah, there are possibilities to manage it it's just sad that there are also just like there are con men here that use my picture and give their tally or whatsapp telegram or whatsapp numbers and say send me a message and i will directly advise you i don't advise anyone i don't practice in the us and they do that they they're con men within my own channels comments thieves are there so i've seen that for every category of work where the, something good can be done to humans there are thieves who are taking advantage of that time as well that uh, opportunity as well <laughs> Denise says my TV is a smart TV you're getting two hits thank you very much Texas says I've got a kitty in my shoulder she thinks she's chirp that is funny kitties are good oh i had to tell you i received a picture of a i received a letter today we are doing this little chit chat let me actually show you that letter once i received a letter from a i received a letter from a cool bean who met me in charleston and so she sent a beautiful a uh, card and a letter the most important thing in there is she sent me the pictures of her little dog her little baby so this is um what is his name let me see i i actually enjoyed it i was laughing when i was looking at the i laugh when i look at pets i just find them cute um so i'm including pictures of my dog riley she is she is a 14 year old labr labradoodle and we have been watching dr bean together so this is i think that this is my fan that doesn't send me curses at all maybe he does woof every once in a while <laughs> but th this is so cute so thank you very much becky for for sending this and thank you very much for coming to meet me in charleston Kingpin says, what's the difference between wax injury and long COVID? Look, at the end of the day, they're probably their causative agent spike is the common thing. So their symptoms are very common. But vaccines have the adjuvant as well that can also cause uh, extra immune activation. Long COVID has the immune dysregulations as well. So there's a lot of overlap. sky frog says pull the like yes everyone hit the like together <laughs> dinny says you have a parrot here as well send me the pictures of your little pets i love to show those pictures and see those pictures so what else is happening uh is mirovirox still on flccc protocol i think so but as a third line not as a first line
Meanwhile says, can you remind me the purpose of running the cell trend antibody panels? So, <clears throat> and I've seen this a lot. There is a possibility of anti-idiotypical antibody production. And I have actually done a discussion and I have actually had Dr. William Murphy with me as well a couple of times who wrote his, uh, um, his study on anti-idiotypical antibodies, anti-idiotypic or typical antibodies. Basic idea. This is also called um, Neil Jenkins' uh, network theory as well. This was in somewhere in 1950s, 60s that he gave this theory, and it is still way, now they're finding more and more um, evidence of it. And Dr. William Murphy's work, he actually lays out some cases where this is true. So what happens is this. Imagine this is a spike protein. Say this is S2, this is S1. There are, <clears throat> I'm going to talk in more high level, level levels, but I'm going to give a quick note for the medical professionals that, of course, there are, hundreds of epitopes on here. An epitope is a smaller piece, maybe 7, 8, 11, 12 amino acids long. And so there are many, many epitopes. So when this is introduced in our body, our B cells will make antibodies. B cells have receptors, TCRs, and B cell will make antibodies that can bind with these epitopes. Good. So could I say that our body will figure out how to bind with the spike protein. Especially the RBDs is what we want to do. Now we also know that RBD is where it connects, the spike protein connects with the ACE2, correct? Now, when an antibody is produced against this area or these epitopes, our body also knows that I need to remove these antibodies from the body because they would serve a purpose when the infection is there. Afterwards, these antibodies don't need to be there. Our body has various mechanisms for that. One is that it kills the active cells. They do the apoptosis and they die away. That is, there are regulatory cells. There are many cells that would stop the active fighting. Then the memory cells would stay for some time and even they can fade away. Then the antibodies that are still circulating in the tissues and blood like a milkshake, these are removed by what is called anti-idiotypical antibody. What that is, is our body makes another set of antibodies that can bind with this one, with this guy. So this is the antibody against the antigen. So this is called anti antibody, antigen against the antibody, right? And this is called anti-idiotypical antibody. Now, this antibody can bind with where the spike protein binds. Why? Because if you have a mirror here, and then you mirror the mirror, you will end up with this side. Now, those antibodies that we are making that are against the antibodies that we made against the spike protein, these antibodies may be able to start binding to the ACE2. If that happens, they would start triggering the ACE2 like spike protein does, or they would cause down regulation of ACE2. They would throw the um, balance of uh, inflammation and anti inflammation mechanism so they can cause damage. Plus, they would cause, once they bind here, even if they don't do anything thing to the cell, they would activate the complement system, and th these are called bi biological functions of the antibody. That would attack the cell and the surrounding cells, and inflammation would start. So we can call them as anti-ACE2 antibodies. Cell trend has an anti-ACE2 antibody in their panel. So they can tell if a patient infected or vaccinated has the anti-ACE2 going on, and if that is present, that would tell us 
that either the B cells that are making NTS2, they have become disregulated, or this is persisting, and that is making the antibodies against the spike, and then the spike, there are anti typical that are being formed, they're also going and attacking, and that is possible. Then there is also another possibility that the spike is actually gone, but these proteins are present, and then these are produced uh, uh, you know, against them, and now we have all the inflammation going on. So that is the... Oh, I was not sharing my screen. I should always just keep sharing my screen. I am... <laughs> this is the doodle. <laughs> this is the doodle. <laughs> there should be a little kick here. And some of you should be able to remotely trigger it to kick me. <laughs> okay. I'm not doodling again. <laughs> Okay, so let's ask the original question asker if I should redo it. Meanwhile, in America, should I redo it or? Oh, this will work. <laughs> Denise, that's not fair. <laughs> I was doing that to get more coffees. <laughs> Showing you my face. <laughs> Okay, good. <laughs> Sorry. This has, so do you know the biggest example of this one? Once I did a complete lecture without sharing the screen, then I saw the lecture, then I redid that. And then the second one was Dr. Pierre Corey. Remember I was interviewing him and the interview was about one and a half hours long. And the, for the first hour, he was connected from a hotel and he was talking and then his internet went away. He did not know. He kept going for another half an hour just teaching his, his computer. And then I called him. He was not picking up his phones because he was interviewing. So afterwards, once we talked, I said, man, so I, I remember that was quite a time. That was funny as well. I have done this two, three times, what I just did today. I hope I didn't frustrate you too much. Lisa says, so what line of protocol do I follow at 2.5 years according to FLCCC, first, second, and third, being sick every single day since March 17, 2020 is too long. I agree. <coughs> so my... I don't do advice, but from an educational point of view, imagine that your doctor is watching and we are discussing with the doctor to say, how do we uh, work on it? The first thing to figure out is what's going on. And I understand that Dr. Bruce Patterson has his own panel. And some people say, why do I not uh, have him on again? He is now a commercial entity. And because he's commercial and nothing bad in it, more power to him, whoever is doing business within the legal structures, more power to them. But my hope is to bring in folks who would provide some knowledge which does not have a commercial influence on it. And I don't say that he would, but this is one of the reasons I haven't had him. There are some panels there, but for me, the very basic panels are number one, the blood counts to see if the RBCs are fine and platelet counts are fine and the WBC counts are fine and the widths are fine. That's one. Secondly, the infl inflammatory proteins, the CRPs and D-dimers and other C acute phase reaction proteins. I think that should be done. Then the antibody panels should be done, and especially the panels from C cell trend, because they talk about NTAs2 antibodies. Then maybe if there are neuropathies, then the complement system for um, small fiber neuropathy and the complement that can attack it because of the antibodies. And similarly, the approach to the cure in my opinion, when it is not working, we should step back, 
do the labs understand what may be the guide guidance what may be the light from the labs to say maybe it is spike protein maybe it is virus reservoir maybe it is mast cells then one product at a time i have actually observed that those patients who take too many supplements and substances they also get stuck in the long covid's continuity and so i was actually very very curious that why does that happen and i came across this study a few days ago i was actually hoping to share that that study was they looked at 41 supplements that are available in the market and i think majority of the supplements either did not have the ingredients claimed on the labels or they had harmful ingredients in addition to the meaning they had impurities in there so i have seen sometimes people even with the supplements can become aggravated so i usually just ask stop everything everything supplements and anti inflammatories and if they can some patients just cannot but stop everything look at your labs and then start one item at a time to see how to handle it meanwhile in america why are you upset what happened did i do something yes your yeah, doctor said that there is very good d little says i would like like you to i can i first thought i'll do it and then i thought you know what people would say why is he going after supplements but i wanted to actually make the cool beans aware that not all supplements are or companies are doing good then i thought people are going to say are do you have an agenda for some company so it, i just left it but i think this was a very interesting thing because i kept observing people taking supplements becoming sometimes sick not all but some and i said what's going on with the supplements that is true that is true because they're used to looking beyond the allopathic medicine and they're used to looking beyond just the here is an rct in jama or najam or lancet and we told you so here is your algo so broken forever maybe i can present that study they have some of the companies and their products listed as this had extra things or this didn't have the correct things so maybe we can look at that misha that is so and this is the other part that most of these monies are not coming from the insurance and people have to take care of themselves it's just really a mess and people are just fighting with each other grace no i have not but i believe in melatonin melatonin is very good lisa says so i stopped everything but if i eat carbs or sugar here comes the symptoms of tinnitus edema tight throat muscles so it is known that carbs and uh, sugars cause um inflammation inflammation so what that or they accentuate or amplify existing in inflammations i love what dr paul marek did what he did was he cut not for reasons of uh, long covid or vaccine injury he just wanted to do it once he started looking at autophagy or so he's actually going to speak in a conference i don't want to steal his thunder once he has spoken then i'll invite him for an interview here but he cut carbs and he was telling me some miraculous answers good things so we'll we'll have him on and we'll discuss with him hopefully next week or the week after <laughs> king pin says can you be my doctor get rid of my useless one so if you are in pakistan then yes 
okay um sayed shujaat says can mcas cause high hemoglobin and high hematocrit um high hemoglobin high hematocrit having the issue from a year in long covid i've gone through with hematologists they're sure that this is not polycythemia i don't think it is polycythemia but when we have inflammation continuing inflammation would gear up the bone marrow as well because the liver would produce the the acute phase proteins the inflammatory cells would produce interleukins that would go and trigger the bone marrows to make more cells so it is possible that with that this is happening and one way to test that is for your doctor to kind of calm down your immune system for some time for a few weeks and then do the labs the problem at least in the us is doctors do do not want to <coughs> and i don't blame them they do not want to um suppress the immune system for the lack of a better word and so they never reach a point to actually understand that is it because of inflammation that the symptoms are there or there is a damage to some organ so if there is a organ that has become da- damaged so imagine if a nerve has cut in my arm you can give me as many steroids as you want that nerve is not coming back but imagine there is inflammation of the nerve and you calm down the inflammation and there is no other permanent damage then i'll feel better so once you feel better then you know that there is a there is an inflammatory component then the question becomes where is that coming from and what you do is and doctors know this better than me so uh, what you do is this imagine inflammation is like this is our tissue or tissues and they are sitting in a pan they're sitting in a pan and they are on fire they're being cooked by the inflammation i'm just using non technical terms it has become so difficult after speaking for two and a half years that any time i use non technical terms or simple straightforward messaging somebody would have to go and say dr mubeen said this never happens so when i started nobody cared what i said or not said and i was able to articulate in our general ways so here let's say this is the tissues and we have inflammation going on like a flame if we don't and we do not know what is causing this so now there are two approaches one approach is a doctor would say you know what i see that there is inflammation going on however i do not believe in stopping this by steroids for example the problem is that during this time when they are running the labs they're just simply saying hey we can't find anything sorry do this or do that some tissues may be getting permanently damaged or close to getting that way so <clears throat> sure in the beginning you don't the press immune system you do the labs you figure out what's wrong and try to address that and find what is a pathology and try to address that if not especially in the long covid or vaccine injury then at least calm down the fire while working up what's going on that's how i have always approached and i have always had good outcome with this approach say shuja says thank you for the answer can you be my doctor i live in pakistan yes we can talk about that the little says have you seen any studies on possible immune system benefits of eating a whole plant based diet there are actually many studies about that and i 
come across them. I haven't yet seen it to say, let me present it as well, because there's just so much work done already. But if you like, I can discuss that. So Kerry girl, I see your question. I will. So I admitted a couple of days ago that I have not done enough research on why. So this seems like stress related. I actually started reading it today. So this seems like normal st stress related hair loss. The good news there is that those hair would come back. But I asked patrons that what should I talk about today? And they chose this topic. So hopefully soon I'll discuss that as well. So can the cardiovascular events occur because of spikes? Yes. Can they be so bad that they cause calcification that shows up just within five, six months? I'm not sure about that. <clears throat> that is true. So just a quick one. I have no financial interests with Dr. Heather, but I like his work. I like his approach. He is one of those doctors who are rare, who keep learning and trying to understand more. If you see my talks with him, I usually find it very interesting that he is practicing. He can actually say, hey, I'm practicing here in the UK, US. Why do I need any other advice? but he's always looking for advice. So to me, it seems like he keeps finding gems to bring to his patients to do better for them. And he doesn't care where he finds the gem from. And that's why I like him. But I have no financial or other or business or commercial interest of any sort with him. Joseph Kuhn has a very good question. Does the immune system code different antibodies for the same virus? If so, what does it code for besides the active site and the spike protein? Very good question. So short answer is yes. And now I have the screen being shared. So let me see. So let's look at, look at a fundamental way our immune system works. And that is, and let me Google it. Uh, either 7 to 11, 12 amino acids in an epitope, or 11, 12 to 20, 30, 20, 22, 23 in an epitope for T cell receptor. So if you... Google it and say epitope size for T cell receptor, it would actually tell you that the length of epitope is this much. Or if you said epitope size for antibodies, <clears throat> look five to eight amino acids, correct? Then if you say, um, let's say length of SARS CoV 2 genome, so it's going to be about 11,000-ish. Why am I Googling it as well? It just is easy to show that you can actually do it by yourself too. So here, how many base pairs have I? This, this screen is so small. 29,000, 29.9 thousand base, bases. So now if I go back here, let's say this is the virus. 
this virus has of course the spike proteins correct am i sharing yes <laughs> So that is one. Now a spike protein, if you look at the length of spike protein, I think it is about 12, 1300 base, bases. So let's, let's use 1200 for our example. Now one B cell, one B cell can make one antibody which can bind to five to eight amino acids. This <coughs> virus has 29,000 bases which will then allow various proteins to be formed. Now it's not necessary that all 29,000 will become available to bind because some of them are hidden inside in a 3D structure, some are on the surface, only the surface epitopes become available for these cells to work with. When we get the infection, we can actually make antibodies that would attach here and here and here and here, nucleocapsid and M and whatever. And every human being will create a different set. There will be some commonality, but majority of them are going to be different. So now if I go back to your question, Joseph, does the immune system code different antibodies to the same virus? So you can see yes, and hundreds of different antibodies. If so, what does it code for besides the active site of the spike protein? It doesn't even know what is the active site. It just knows the following. If we have a document, let's say lorem ipsum going here, some just some. So let's say this is all some document. You and I do not know what it is. So imagine we are the B cells or T cell. We have no idea what it is here. However, there is actually lorem ipsum, some idea here. However, let's say I have a hand that can bind with the words text. So if I kind of move my hand on it, I found text here and I'll bind here. Let's say, and I have tons of B cells. One can bind to the word text, another can bind to the word lorem, another can bind to the word simply and so on. So whichever B cell got the chance to bind first, that would become activated. Same is the case with the T cell receptors as well. Their epitope size is bigger. I think about 22, 23 amino acids. So <clears throat> virus, uh, sorry, our B cells or T cells have no idea what is the active site or not. They just are, imagine they have this little uh, path is here, path, what are the, uh, antibodies that are used as B cell receptors. IgD is usually used as a B cell receptor. IgM can be as well, but mostly IgD. So this IgD is, imagine we all, imagine for a second, I'm going <laughs> to unshare. I hope I remember to share again. Imagine all of us have our hand out and all of us have a different hand. And we cannot change the shape of our hand. Whatever way it is made, that is what it is. And all of us have a different hand. And now we are moving about in the world and we keep, it will be a weird thing if we did this, if we keep trying to test everything around us to see where can this bind. Wherever it can bind, we attack that thing. So we have no idea where it is binding is an active site or a good epitope to work with or bad epitope to work with. All we know is if I bind it, I'm going to attack it. That's in a very nutshell because our immune system has so much regulations that we don't end up attacking our own body. We don't end up attacking things that are there for a long time and so on. So immunology is a huge deal. Um, maybe I should write that book. <laughs> and I'm thinking of writing the immunology book in a very interesting way. And that is, 
I think I should do the lectures. Lectures would allow me to create content that I can then put in the book. So if you are up for it, we'll do lectures on immunology from coming week to this Monday. Actually, we'll have our first immunology lecture. So Sunset Way says, how much? Uh, look, I have taken 10,000 IU, IUs daily. Uh, there are doctors and there are uh, vitamin D capsules and, and tablets with 250,000, 150,000 international units that are given as a loading dose. And then it goes on for some time because it can be stored in the um, in the fat cells. Now... There was a study that I discussed early on when we were talking about vitamin D, where they had said that this idea of 800 international units or 1,000 is not correct. They said that the correct calculation, if done, means about 8,000 daily. I think it depends upon the person's situation as well, how deficient are they, how comfortable <coughs> they are if the levels are good and they keep adding more to it eventually they'll reach the toxic level if the levels are less and they keep adding they would reach the correct level then once they have the levels they're not going to stay there forever because the body is using vitamin d as well and especially when we are under stress with the vex with the uh, inflammations and uh, viruses and those that would also eat up the vitamin d and we'll need bigger piles again so it really, the best way for vitamin D, I really wanted to do it, is to just like a glucometer, have a vitamin D meter. And just do your little <coughs> vitamin D thing and see what it is and based on that, take medicine. <laughs> Tex is just timed out, broken. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll start from this Monday. Book and lecture. So I'm hoping that these lectures will then feed into the book and we would have book forcefully created. <laughs> Unless people just throw their things on the floor and say, we are not watching you anymore. No more immunology. Joseph says, on the virus, the sugar coat comes off after binding to the ACE2 site. Any antibodies coded for those new exposed sites would have nothing to bind to until the sugar coat. So that's a, it's true that all 3D structures have hidden epitopes in them. But normally we can just attach to the outer sides and do enough damage to handle the virus. Yes. Cynthia. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> that is my way of forcing myself to write the book. Joseph says, does the immune system code antibodies that have no active sites to bind to? Yes, on a live virus due to sugar coating. So, the, there is a concept of somatic hypermutation. When our baby B cells are born or baby T cells are born, their genes are randomly shuffled to make their binding, uh, what we say, variable regions, binding regions, their hands. Many of them would never use their hands. Many of them are just sitting. For example, the ones that connect with SARS-CoV-2, Maybe they were just sitting out there and never thought we will have a SARS-CoV-2 to bind to. And then they got a chance. Although I'm wrong here by saying they would never. They bind to such a small part that it doesn't have to be SARS-CoV-2. They can find that epitope in other things as well. But that is the general idea that we can create so many of B cells and T cells with the somatic hypermutation, with the variable regions that would not bind to anything. And they're just sitting there to say, maybe someday something will come in that I will bind with. So, captioner, it is actually difficult to 
get to the toxic levels, but one can become ambitious to keep pushing it above 80, 90, 100. So yes, it can become toxic. So, John, I think that the title, so I'm discussing with the publisher, I think the title will be um, something like Immunology Made Easy, some more part that I don't want to say, so somebody else doesn't go make it. Joseph says, when do you, when you do your book, have your, have you thought about going the Asps fables route. Truth is easier to digest when it is covered in a sugar coating of a cure story. That's how viruses do it. That will be very interesting. So we still want to make all these cartoons and stuff. <laughs> so sure. Kimberly says, do you have to have the antibodies? for the SP177 mechanism to work. So SP177 itself is the antibody. So you don't need to have the antibodies for it to work. It would just work. If there is a virus, it will attack it. At least that's the idea. So it is a mice study yet, then it will have to become maybe a little bigger than humans and so on. <laughs> Kimberly says, when are you going to sell your art? It is such a... So I'll tell you the truth, why I don't sell my art. I actually think my art is not worth it to sell. So I don't take the pain of creating the Etsy shop. Actually, there was a cool bean who created a shop on some site, gave me the passwords and said, just upload your, your images here. And I thought these, these were not worth it, so I didn't do it. So it's more of a, I may be okay as a non-artist to do some doodling, which may look attractive. But if you look at that as, from an artist's point of view, I think it's not there. The composition, the color balances, the harmonies, there's so many things that are not correct. That is true, <laughs> Joseph says, creators do not it, but creators have to be brave enough to present. <laughs> Kimberly says, do it. Okay, I'll do it. Excellent, will do. And <laughs> the goal, like that, she, the goat. M. Price says, I apologize for asking again, but if HLA B27 positive, is COVID more severe? Not necessarily. There are many people with B27, so many autoimmune diseases and responses can be because of that, but not necessary. There is actually no consensus on why some people become. There are so many studies to say, if we found this in the people who became severe, we found this. For example, even today, what was that part of the study? When I was discussing this study of uh, the escape, during that uh, research, I came across a study that was talking about, what was it talking about? It was talking about the prion-like domains on the spike protein. Now, remember, these are tiny enough things. It, this is like saying, let's figure out a word. Let's say the word happy. Now, word happy can appear in so many documents. And just by saying that the word happy is there, you can't say this document is incorrect. Similarly, prions are just such small genetic materials or the genome is so small that it can appear in so many places. So I came across that study where this, and this was a more latest study. It was actually in 2022, now this year's study, that there are some prion domains that are present on the spike proteins of SARS-CoV-2. 
However, their frequency because of mutations is more on delta than others. And they said because of that, it has more, delta cause more severity as well. So maybe it is that prion do domain. So there are so many studies that say that people who were severe, they had following characteristics. But there is no deterministic characteristic to say if this is there, then they will be severe. We do say that the people who are severe are mostly, let's say, um, obese or diabetics, or but there still is no, there are so many obese or diabetics who do not become severe. So I hope you catch my drift that it there is actually no deterministic answer to that. There are totally healthy people who become very severe and there are totally unhealthy people have seen it. There was a student of mine who asked his family, they got COVID and he asked me to help them. When I was managing them, his father was, I think, 72 years old and diabetic and was not very good with the control. He didn't have anything while the children, this medical student and his wife, he was actually a doctor, and his wife were having more severe symptoms than his father who was older and diabetic. And I kept saying, we need to take care of him. We have to be aggressive with him. We have to give him this and this and this. And he was like, oh, well, I'm fine. So I was actually thinking, yes, Dr. Merrick. I was thinking either Dr. William Murphy or Dr. Merrick or both of them. I was thinking of requesting them to do a a forward. Margaret says, sir, who said colors and art were not correct? Nobody said, I, I just thought that. <laughs> This is correct, that too much calcium can mobilize, uh, sorry, too much vitamin D can mobilize the calcium. So vitamin D has to be taken with the correct K2 and the magnesium, and there's a way to do that. So how about we <laughs> break for today? I am so blessed that you spent your Friday evening with me. Uh, thank you very much. And I would see you on Monday with an immunology lecture. Uh, please, please don't leave it alone because then I'll become discouraged and stop doing them. Uh, watch it. <laughs> I think you'll like it. And uh, have a nice weekend. Please like, subscribe, and share these videos as well. And if you would like to support this work, there are some links in the description. You can support them. PayPal, buy me a coffee, becoming a patron. There are many ways. Thank you very much. And I would see you on Monday. Have a nice weekend. And we would have our morning Zoom walk tomorrow at 7.